Kudusangpula, I am Lalit Kurung. We are here at the Pema Symposium, organized by the Pema Secretariat in collaboration with World Health Organization, with the theme towards building people-centered mental health care through resilient and supportive society. In this event, experts shared global and regional best practices to improve mental health outcomes in Bhutan. Um, the Pema Symposium on mental health was envisioned uh, by Her Majesty last year. Um, to really look at innovative and sustainable solution uh, to the pressing issue of our time, which is mental health. Um, mental health, as we know, uh, we often talk about mental health, saying, oh, it's important, mental health. Mental health is important, you know. But um, we know that we are not doing enough for mental health. Um, um, I think there needs to be a, a platform where we have conversation around mental health. How do we deliver mental health services? How do we effectively uh, provide care and support to people who are suffering from mental health? How do we advocate uh, for, for, for promotion of mental well-being? You know, all these aspects uh, is, is a learning process. So the symposium creates a platform where policymaker, advocates, scientists, academics, civil society organization, government agencies, we come together. And of course, people living with lived experience that you heard uh, this afternoon as well, both during the post-lunch session, share about their idea of how the mental health system should look like. What what are some of the solutions to addressing mental health? So this is really a platform for, for discussion, for dialogues, um, and to come up with some concrete ideas to implement mental health uh, uh, interventions and programs. Therefore, I'm pleased and proud to say that our Southeast Asia region has made a decisive commitment to promoting and treating mental health and well-being for everyone in our communities. People-centered care must include the voices of those with lived experiences. This Pema Initiative in Bhutan serves as a shining example for our region. Under the guidance of Her Majesty Nagelson, Pema has pioneered coordinated efforts to streamline mental health services across multiple sectors. And I truly commend the effort. Mental health is not just a health issue. It is a social issue an economic issue and a human rights issue. It intersects with all aspects of life, education, employment, and social inclusion. PEMA has four arms. One, first is prevention. Let's try to prevent if possible. If prevention, prevent watching acute response. So we immediately provide counseling services, we provide uh, uh, social support to person um, suffering from mental health. Now, rehabilitation, long-term care, long-term rehabilitation center, treatment, menchu, through our PEMA center. Then after that is reintegration. So how do you build the capacity and competency of that individual? No, so so it, it, it's, a, it's a whole holistic approach to mental health. Rather than in many countries, I've worked in many countries um, in the past as consultant, I realized some are, there's one agency doing prevention, there's one agency doing treatment, there's another agency doing rehabilitation, nobody doing reintegration, you know. So here, under one roof, all these services are provided through a holistic approach to addressing mental health. And, and, and I think that in itself is a very unique approach. And I speak this as a, as, a, as a public health professional, a unique approach to addressing mental health. And this is possible only with the leadership of, of Her Majesty the Gelson Sir. The last two days, this event hosted thought-provoking discussions, research presentations, and collaborative workshops. Attendees joined in exploring innovative strategies, sharing inspiring stories, and sparking collaborative action to shape a future empowering mental health care. The discussions also explored ways to bridge gaps, amplify marginalized voices, and ensure that every individual has the support they need to thrive. It laid the groundwork for a future where mental health care is not only a right, but also a powerful tool for personal and collective transformation. 
So um, the gaps that I see in the treatment of mental health is mainly there's a work in silos where most of the programs are not integrated with mental health. There's a lot of focus on physical and medical health, but not so much on mental health, probably due to the stigma related. So a way of uh, effective way of uh, uh, bridging this gap would be to include, uh, give as uh, Her Majesty said, to give the mental health the national priority that it deserves. Thank Thank you. You can't address mental health by one agency. It has to be either a whole of a society, whole of an agency approach to addressing mental health. No? Because it's not one individual's responsibility. It's our collective responsibility to address mental health and well-being. So that's why I think coming together and working together is so, so important. We work very closely with Ministry of Education, for example. We realize that not only to promote mental health, but to build resilience in our children so that so that when they are faced with any kind of adversity, that they are able to manage and cope this adversity and and come out of it no and and this is where we are we are uh, working with education to have uh, well-being um, 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 uh, committees in schools well-being programs in schools so that children learn to not only be happy but also be resilient um, so that when they are faced with challenges they are able to cope up some um, and that's the program with uh, with Ministry of uh, Education at the moment. Education, um, making people aware of what mental health is, services, I think is so critical. Um, uh, have we done enough? No, I think we have a long way to go. Um, we have the vision now. Uh, now we need to translate that vision into um, tangible realities, as I as I mentioned earlier. We have the guidance, we have the um, strategic vision from Her Majesty. Now it's our duty to translate that vision into tangible realities. Um, I think some of the strategies and practices that I find to be very helpful in promoting uh, mental health and well-being uh, is really about uh, having a daily practice of mindfulness and meditation. Uh, in fact, at our school, uh, we have well-being sessions where every child uh, has the opportunity to sit in silence for about uh, a minute and a half. And uh, we also have a mindfulness bell that goes off uh, five minutes after every period change bell. And this allows our students to take a pause, to reset, to take a mindful breath, and then they are fully focused and present for whatever activity that is going on at that moment. Uh, some of the other practices that we have at our school, are we have a few uh, uh, well-being mantras, you could call them. So we say, you know, when it comes to understanding and recognizing our emotions, we say we have to name it to tame it, uh, we have to feel it to heal it, and we have to attend it to befriend it. For more news like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe Bhutan Today's social media platforms.